Hey there, welcome back. This again is Dave King DDS. I'm um, just continuing our uh, uh, Dentistry 101 series and wanted to touch base now. We're going to go ahead and talk about the new patient exam. So I think this is a really critical time, um, the new patient exam, to really get to know the patient. Um, we've talked about some other issues, you know, beforehand, interactions with the team, um, quality of care, some of these issues that we've talked about in other videos. Um, this new patient exam really is where the heart of dentistry is, um, if you will. And um, we're going to talk about today over the next 10 or 15 minutes um, how we can do a good exam and how we can really make a solid impression on our patient to develop that trust um, so that they'll want to seek treatment from us. Um, so let's start out with when the patient enters the office. So this, this comes down to how the office is, generally speaking, from a cleanliness standpoint, a friendliness standpoint, um, and how well we, in, we create an invite, inviting environment uh, for the office. So um, let's think about um, the interactions with our team as we've discussed before. I, as a dentist and as uh, the owner of the office, want to make sure that, that the emotional um, tone in the office is very positive. The, the patients will pick up on this, and we've talked about this before. The patients will pick up on how well the office trusts me, how well I trust the assistants, the front office team. So it's really critical that we establish a very positive environment from the get-go. So what I like to do with my patients after they're checked in um, is review their health history, make sure that uh, we are aware of any red flags that may come, come up. Um, this, this all is, you know, stuff for another video. Um, I'm going to talk about the overview of the new patient exam. So review the health history. Um, and then I want to pull that patient in for a brief uh, interview, uh, kind of a meet and greet, if you will, as Paul Homily would say. Um, in this meet and greet, I want, to, I want to accomplish a couple of things. Number one, I want them to get to know me outside of an operatory. I want them to see me as a human being instead of as a dentist. Now they've come in with some pre preconceived notions. Generally they're thinking, here's a, here's a guy that uh, wants to put his hands in my mouth, he wants to give me a shot, he wants to drill on my teeth or scrape on my sensitive teeth. So it's important that we get to know them uh, on an even playing field before there's this power relationship where I'm the dentist, you're in the chair. Um, we want to give them an opportunity to see me as a human being. So we're gonna pull them into a consult room or even in the operatory um, and turn around, get right in front of them, um, sit down and, and have a little chit chat with them. Hi, how you doing? Where are you from? Tell me about your day. When was your last checkup? Um, what experiences have you had in the past with dentistry? Um, here's where I'm from. Here's how long I've been practicing. A little bit about my family. Um, did you see the Cardinals game? Did you see the Royals game? What have you? Um, just get to know the, the, the person, the patient on an individual level. Um, before you dig really deeply into their dental history. Um, then I think it's really important, once you've done that, to really frame, and this is um, coming straight from Valerie Kendrick, really frame the discussion that you're going to have with the patient, um, the, the appointment, I mean. So tell them what you're going to be doing. So um, today we're going to go ahead and do a, an exam. It's going to consist of some x-rays, which I will prescribe. Um, we're going to do an oral cancer screening. We're going to check your teeth. We're going to evaluate your gums. Once that's done, we're going to talk through what problems you have. We'll discuss some of the consequences of these problems, and I'll recommend treatment. At that point, if you'd like, we can come up with a long-term game plan to help facilitate your oral health. And if you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to ask. How does that sound? I always want to make sure I get the patients okay to do this. Um, a lot of times in that new, um, new patient interview, in that meet and greet exam, um, you're going to have an opportunity to figure out what exactly the patient wants. A lot of times these patients that have sat down in the consult room with you, um, they're appointed for a full new patient exam, but they want to focus on one tooth, this one that's been bothering them up here for a couple of days since that filling fell out, or the tooth down here that's chipped and bothering their tongue. They only want to focus on that. So it's important that we, we dig a little bit for that information so that we don't sit down and do a full exam and then they say, wait, wait a minute, I only wanted to worry about this tooth. Um, that can create some challenges. Um, I had an experience a couple of months ago with a, a lady. I had what I thought was a very positive uh, interview with her. And then she decided that um, I had misread the discussion I had with her. 
um, I wanted to do a full exam, um, and she wanted rather to do just a limited exam. And so we had to kind of discuss that again. I apologize for misreading um, that uh, interview with her, and we were okay with focusing on the limited exam. We didn't, we didn't charge her any of the full x-rays or whatever, and we focused on that. So make sure you get a handle on what they're here for. Really dig into what they want. Um, you know, it's important not only that we offer per, um, high quality services to all of our patients, but that we offer the services that they want. Um, yes, we're obligated, and we have a responsibility as healthcare providers, as dentists, uh, to go ahead and um, identify all the concerns that are there within the scope of what they want to focus on. Um, I think a lot of us sometimes get in the habit of telling a patient, I'm not going to recommend any, any treatment unless you're willing to do what I want to do. And I think in the long run, that's a disservice to patients. Now, granted, it's important that they realize they need to be seen routinely um, in order to you know, make sure we're minimizing the risk of infection or pain or long-term health issues. Um, but at the same time, we have to honor their requests. And I think there needs to be a, a meeting somewhere in the middle of what we want and what they want uh, in the name of serving them um, better long-term. So if we can identify or focus on that limited exam today, long-term, that may give us an opportunity to serve them again with a full exam. Um, we want to make sure we have a positive experience going forward. So after I do that quick meet and greet, I'm going to prescribe some x-rays based on what they want to focus on, whether it's a full exam, whether it's a limited exam, and then I'm going to walk them to the uh, x-ray room. Now, oftentimes if there's some doubt, some question about what they're here for or what, that, what kind of x-rays they need, I will sit down with them in an operatory and visually examine their, their mouth in a full setting, uh, full dental setting, before I prescribe those x-rays. Um, either way, the x-rays are going to be specific to that patient. I don't have a blanket order for all of my patients. We want to um, order x-rays specific to what that patient needs. Um, so we'll either do a limited exam after the meet and greet, or I'll take them right to the x-ray room and prescribe the x-rays that they need. Uh, at that point, the dental assistant will go ahead and take the x-rays, and as the x-rays are being taken, assuming I have time, I'm going to go ahead and review those x-rays as they come up. Um, one of the things that I love to do with these x-rays, since we use an all-digital system, the SHIC um, software, um, is I will put a little flag pointing to the problem, whether it's interproximal caries, whether it's calculus or a fracture, and I like to take photos, the intraoral photos, every single time. So I like my photos to mimic my x-rays. I've got a molar, upper left molar photo, upper left premolar photo, anterior photo, all these photos should mimic um, the radiographs from the standpoint of being able to see what's going on on the occlusal surface of the tooth. And, you know, if there's any question, we also want to get the buccal or lingual. This is all about patient education, helping them to see what's going on in their mouth. Um, and I also like to update these x-rays, um, the photos rather, with every set of bite wings. So I'll update photos every time we take bite wings. Um, if a patient opts out of the bite wings, I want to update the photos once a year. That way we can see progression of any problems, whether it's a crack or an occlusal or an MO decay, whatever it is, I want to see that progression and be able to show the patient what's happening in their mouth. Um, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, you've all heard that before and it's very, very true. Um, being able to show the patient on a screen in front of them um, is really worth its weight in gold. It's definitely worth the time to get good quality pictures, occlusal photos of the teeth. So once that um, x-ray and photo session is done, um, the patient will be seated in the examination room. At this point, the assistant will come grab me, um, and I'll come in and we'll do the three-part exam. So my three-part exam consists of, number one, an oral cancer screening. I do a visual oral cancer screening. Sometimes I'll palpate all the musculature and lymph nodes, you know, checking for swelling and duration. Um, okay. Um, palpate, check for everything. Um, then secondarily, I'm going to use a Velscope. Uh, the Velscope is great, narrow bandwidth imaging, really bright blue intense light, allows us to see abnormal um, vasculature, abnormal tissue. It's a screening tool. If I see anything that concerns me, then I'll go ahead and use the uh, uh, specialist to go and do a biopsy. I've done a lot of biopsies myself. I feel like um, I like to use the specialist to do the biopsy, so I think that's a great choice there. Um, but Velscope is great. Um, I usually don't charge patients for it. 
um, at least on the initial exam. It's something that going forward, certainly you could justify a charge for that um, if it's ongoing, but I like to use that as a value-added service for the patient. So oral cancer screening. Um, next, I check the gums. Um, and I like to do a full mouth probe on every patient, um, except the really young ones, of course. Um, and I will, I like to do that myself. I feel like a lot more weight comes from the full mouth probe that is done by a dentist than a hygienist. Um, and, and a lot of that I think has to do with, a lot of times, most patients, if they're coming from a practice that hasn't had a really solid periodontal program, um, the hygienist has been the point of contact for anything gum related. And so when they see a dentist, who is doing a full mouth periodontal probe, they realize that this has a lot of weight. But I like to frame my periodontal evaluation by saying something like this. We know now that individuals with gum disease have a higher risk of heart attack and stroke. Um, so we wanna screen you for gum disease because we know it's very common. I'm gonna use a, um, a ruler uh, and I hold up the periodontal probe that will help you to evaluate how healthy your gums are. Listen to the numbers. Numbers one, two, or three are healthy. Anything above or four and above tells me there's some infection or inflammation going on, and we'll talk about that after the exam. So at this point now, the patient is listening, um, and they're ready to hear what's going on in their mouth. So I'll lean the patient all the way back if I haven't already, and then we're gonna chart every single tooth. And it's been my experience that a good full periodontal probing will take a few minutes. And I'm not talking about the three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three, two, three, two, 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 two. I'm talking about three, two, three, three, two, three. You know, it should it should take roughly a second per measurement if you're doing it right. Now we can certainly speed things up if if we can, um, but honestly, to get a real thorough evaluation, we're talking about taking some time to do this. And so that goes back to the point discussed in other videos that we want to make sure we're not overlooking periodontal disease. I remember a decade ago or more reading a statistic that said the number one leading cause of malpractice lawsuits and settlements is uh, failure to diagnose periodontal disease and failure to refer periodontal disease for treatment. Um, so we don't want to overlook this from the standpoint of uh, liability to, to us as providers, but first and foremost, we, we don't want to overlook this as a as a screening tool to help our patients become healthier. So it's super duper duper important that we make time to do the periodontal evaluation. Now if the hygienist does the probing, that's totally fine. If you've calibrated with your hygienist and you're aware of her, her quality uh, of care with regard to probing and measurement, but we don't want to glance through this. This should not be something that takes 30 seconds. It should take a couple of minutes, a few minutes maybe. Once that's done, if they've got periodontitis, realizing I've done the oral cancer screening and now I've checked for the gums, um, I will sit the patient up if they have periodontal disease. So realizing I have not looked at the teeth yet except to probe them. So I'm gonna sit the patient up and I'm gonna say something like, I know we still have to look at the teeth, but I, I think it's important that I talk about your gum disease with you. Um, were you aware that you have an active gum infection? And then we kind of go through this discussion about periodontitis with the patient. Um, at this point, um, I want to make sure that they're aware that unless they have something intensely painful or a large abscess in their mouth, I'm going to focus first on the gum disease because it has the propensity to lead them to a higher risk of stroke and heart attack, which is more life-threatening than a chipped tooth. So we want to make sure that we're, we're balancing what's most important from the standpoint of a recommending treatment. Um, after I've had the discussion, which we'll do in another video, with the uh, patient um, regarding periodontitis, uh, then I'll lean the patient back, and then we're going to go through the tooth one at a time. And I find if I use my surgical telescopes to actually view each tooth one at a time with the headlight on, the patient carries a lot, it carries a lot more weight to the patient from the standpoint of, wow, he's really looking at my teeth. Um, you know, it, it, that, that, you know, goes without saying. We want to really focus on each tooth, each surface of each tooth, if we're really doing our job right. Check each margin of every single tooth if we're really doing our job right. Um, at that point, um, we've done the oral cancer screening, check the gums, check the teeth. Then I'll sit the patient up and we'll have the case conversation discussion with them. And we'll do that, excuse me, in another video here shortly. Um, but yeah, so that's my exam uh, process. Some thoughts there. Um, see you in the next video. We'll talk about periodontal disease and the case conversation.